last night got a big dump of freezing rain. Kind of sucks balls. Everything's super icy today. I got to go run some errands. Plus, Dave from the Redneck Garage sent me a new mug. So hopefully, when I pick it up at the post office, it won't be broke. Well, I picked up the package from Dave. His parcel came in, but check out this. Dear Postal Service, this is the second free mug I've shipped. The first one arrived in about 40 pieces. I would appreciate it arriving in one complete unit as this free mug has now cost me $30 in shipping charges. I appreciate your help. David, the Redneck Garage. I think Dave is getting serious. Double box by the looks of it. It's kind of a sweet mug. Made in China. A China mug? Better not give me some frickin' lead poisoning. So far so good, it's holding liquid. Thanks Dave, thanks for the mug, glad it came in. Well, that was fun, so let's get the head back on, set these valves up like we we're going to do, and we'll do the leak down test. Oh, almost put that one on wrong. There we go. The head is back on, the valves are set, need to turn the compressor on. Well everything's hooked up, Let's see what's going to happen. There you have it, we got 90 psi on there, we're reading about... 84 compression is not an issue the hardest part I'm gonna tell you right now about doing a cylinder leakage test is that if you don't have the piston perfect the cylinder is either gonna creep forward or it's gonna creep backwards now in all honesty I should have did that in the first place instead of taking it all apart uh, getting all worried over nothing but at least this way I know the cylinders not scored Everything is set up right. The only issue we're having with the low compression is that the decompression tab is working like it should. I just, however, thought there'd be higher compression than what I was reading. So let's assemble this back together. Another Japanese type carburetor on there, not the OEM one. And we're going to see if it runs a little better or not. So far so good, that came along pretty well. All you gotta do now is add some oil, bolt it back down on the frame, fire it up. Hopefully that new carburetor will run a little smoother. Only one way to find out. Well, let's see what happens now. I'll just set it on the floor and fire up. Feels on, put the choke on. You can probably hear that engine running outside. It's actually running better with that new carburetor than it did with the OEM factory one. So I'm pretty happy with that. The engine's running pretty solid. So now that we went through all that hassle, I'm hoping you guys learned that low compression doesn't actually mean low compression. It all depends if there's a decompression device inside the engine that makes it easier to start. My Articat 650H1 does not have that. So when you go to pull that over, it is a beast. It is two arms, use your back to get it past the compression stroke. That's how strong it is to try to pull it over. Well, there still is something not right with this carburetor. Not sure what yet. Maybe I'll save that for a rainy day. The only thing left to do is to change the mechanical seal on the pump. Both the pump on this project's done. However, we're gonna delay that for a while because I still want to put like another hour and some of running on it before I assemble the pump and then I'll probably put it up for sale or something. But anyways, I think it's motherfucking beer time. Motherfucking beer time. The old Milwaukee. 
Now, if there's one thing we learned from this whole project is that if, you've, if you're having second guesses, don't be afraid to go back, inspect the work you had done because if something screwed up, it's better to catch it earlier than catch it later. So in my case, there's nothing wrong. The leak down test confirmed it 100%. Piston rings are good. Valves are set. Change out that carburetor, run smoother. Project done for now. So tomorrow we're going to continue on the rock crusher. We're going to start building the frame. We're going to talk about how the engine's going to sit, how the drum's going to sit, how we're going to figure out our pulleys and everything else because you just can't just go out and buy pulleys and stick it on. There's actually a science to it. That's why I always say everybody can turn a wrench but knowing what you're doing when you're turning a wrench is a whole nother story. So all those little books I got when I was in the trade in my toolbox, we're going to look at the book tomorrow called Power Transmissions and we're going to go over the belts and we're going to go over pulleys. I'm going to show you some things, some do's and don'ts. But anyways, it's motherfucking beer time. I'll see you guys tomorrow.